Okay, so we're going to talk about the immune system. We owe it our lives. It's one of the most complicated and beautiful things in all existence. Let's first talk about something called a nonspecific or an innate defense. A nonspecific defense is going to act against all pathogens. It doesn't matter what's coming, it's going to stop it. Whether it's a bacteria, bacteriophage, virus, whatever. It's just like a shield, it's going to stop everything. Actually, most life, all invertebrates, do not have anything beyond this, so it's pretty good for them. So your first line of defense for your nonspecific is pretty much going to be your skin, your tears, and your secretions, or your mucus. That's the single most important thing. If your skin is damaged or removed, you're in for a big load of trouble. It's the castle walls that prevent the bad guys from getting inside. If they do manage to make it past there, they're going to encounter a whole host of other things that are there ready to stop them. Inflammation. Histamine is going to increase the flow of blood and other fluids to the site of the injury. You're going to see it get red. You've got these phagocytes. These are cells that are going to come in and are going to eat or destroy bacteria. And there you can see a bacteria getting engulfed by a phagocyte, and it's being fused with what's called the lysosome to destroy everything that it fuses in there. Bacteria comes in, bacteria do not come out. Of course, fever, this is going to be the increased temperature that's going to slow or stop the growth of pathogens. It doesn't feel good for you when you have a fever. It feels worse for the pathogens that are trying to get inside. And finally, your body also produces these really cool compounds called interferons. They more or less interfere with viral replication, make it more difficult for the viruses to get around and reproduce and stuff like that. They don't feel great, but again, they're making it really, really difficult for the viruses. Now your specific defense, also called your adaptive immune system, you don't see this in most of life. You're only going to see this in animals with a more complicated immune system. This one is only going to attack a particular pathogen, but it's going to do it very, very well. It's like those old wanted posters. They're not saying, oh, we're looking for outlaws. They're saying, we are looking for this specific one. This is like the FBI most wanted list. They're not just looking for any old criminals. They're looking specifically for these ones, and they target them with extreme prejudice. Your specific defense has to go and distinguish and tell the difference between self and non-self. Those are kind of weird terms. It seems very psychology or philosophy here, but basically self is all the cells and proteins that belong in the body. Red blood cells, sperm cells, bone cells, nerves, all of those. Things that you were born with, things that you need, that's self. Those belong. Your body has to say, oh, these are good. Don't hurt those. Okay? the cells that you're used to. And then there's non-self, which is literally everything else. Your body has to figure out the difference between those, because if it's non-self, it's going to take a pretty hard, close look at it. And if it determines that it's a pathogen, it's an eliminated. You don't want it attacking self, though. Problems arise with that. Now, if your body does detect a pathogen, you're going to get an immune reaction. When the body recognizes an antigen, a foreign substance, as non-self, it's going to attack it with the cellular and chemical arsenal of weapons through these things called lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are your body's assassins. They're going to go around and actually target and kill those bad guys there. So they're very, very cool, and they're very, very efficient at what it is that they do. You've got T-cell lymphocytes and B-cell lymphocytes. T-cells are going to go around and find other cells that have been infected with viruses and terminate those. And B-cells are going to go and they're going to attack things that haven't actually made it inside a cell. If they're outside a cell, a B-cell is going to be going for them. Otherwise, that's the T-cell's domain. T-cells are going to coordinate or target infected cells, killing them or making them commit suicide through a process called apoptosis. Here we have a T-cell and here we have a Mr. T-cell. You pity the fool who expresses something that's non-self. They're not in for a good day. We've got our B cells. They produce antibodies, and those are like our heat-seeking guided missiles. Those bind to antigens and tag them for destruction. Once you get tagged with an antibody, it's a bad day if you're a pathogen. Here's what an antibody actually looks like. It's kind of a Y-shaped molecule, and these ends are going to stick to the pathogens, and that back end there is going to act like an alarm for the rest of the immune system, make it really easy to find it. After your body has actually cleared an infection, most of your B and T cells die, which makes sense. You don't want the assassins just sitting around doing nothing. They're going to get into trouble. But you are going to want to keep a few of them around. Those are your memory cells, and those are going to make you respond faster and much more viciously the next time through. So you don't need to write this down, but let's just kind of review our different ones. We've got a bunch of different cells that make up the immune system, and we're only actually going to be talking about a small subset of them there. Our B cells, as I mentioned, those ones attach stuff that's outside of the cell. They produce antibodies which bind to foreign targets. Okay, there they are. There's a B cell producing antibodies. The analogy, this is like a ship that's deploying missiles. They're going to destroy targets from afar. does not matter where they are you're not going to be able to hide from the B cells in there. So this is like a cruise ship firing off cruise missiles. 
your T cells, those are the ones that coordinate the immune response, or they're going to target the infected contaminated cells and induce suicide, called apoptosis. There's a T cell right there. This is like the James Bond. It's licensed to track down and kill enemies with extreme prejudice. You know, one of those wanted, dead, or alive, except your immune system doesn't want them alive. It wants them dead. So these ones are vicious assassins, and they will take out anything that's in their crosshairs. Antibodies, that's that protein produced by B cells, tag them for easy destruction by the immune system. There you can see more of it there. This is the heat-seeking guided missile. When it attaches to a target, it acts like a streaming siren and a GPS beacon to the immune system. You can't run, you can't hide. If you've been tagged by an antibody, it's pretty much game over there for all pathogens. This is the missile, and when it reaches there, boom, big boom there. Once you've activated the antibody response, your infections are going to be cleared much more quickly. And then finally, our memory cells. As I said, these ones will remember the infection for next time. They will respond a lot more quickly, viciously, and effectively with every repeat infection. They're going to remember, and they're going to go after you. Think of this as like the John Wick cells. If you haven't seen the movie John Wick, here's more or less the plot. He gets a puppy from his dead wife, someone comes in, steals his car, kills his dog, and then he responds by literally killing everyone else in the movie. His family was killed by pathogens. He's a memory cell. He's never going to forget and will never forgive, and he is going to get his revenge if they ever try it again. So there we go. Our main weapons inside the immune system. Now, of course, sometimes things go bad. And sometimes we can get disorders and problems in the immune system. An allergy, that's more or less when the body is attacking something that's harmless. Whether it's an allergy to fish, whether it's an allergy to like pollen or to different sorts of things that are in the environment, your body's attacking something that isn't actually dangerous. This is freaking out over something harmless. This is like a jealous boyfriend. Who are you with? I'm just talking. About, it doesn't matter. That's my brother. And they're freaking out, freaking out. That's an allergy. It shouldn't be freaking out. It's something that's not actually a threat, but unfortunately, it is going to cause trouble. Examples of this, your seasonal allergies, food allergies, even asthma, your body's freaking out over something it shouldn't and causing a lot of problems with that. Part of this may be related to us being too clean. This is called the hygiene hypothesis. Life without parasites, because, you know, more or less here in the Western Hemisphere, we seem to be, you know, not really rife with parasites, but you will find a lot of allergies. So maybe being too clean is a problem for us. An autoimmune disorder, this is when the body confuses self and thinks that it's non-self and it's going to attack. This obviously is going to cause a lot of problems because your immune system is really, really good at killing whatever it wants. You don't want it to kill yourself. Okay, this is when we're going to get certain types of asthma, multiple sclerosis, Addison's disease, celiac disease, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes. All of these are because the immune system could not distinguish self from non-self anymore, and it attacked something that it shouldn't have. This is kind of like friendly fire in a military analogy. Sorry doesn't bring my head back. Well, yeah, that's what's happening there. Your immune system can't say sorry. That's where we get autoimmune disorders. Examples of this, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis. So here we have uh, diabetes. This is where your immune system should be attacking a foreign invader, but instead goes for the pancreas, which is the part that's making insulin. And when you can't make insulin, you're diabetic. And if you're diabetic, there's a lot of problems that come from that. And finally, HIV or AIDS. This is specifically a disease of the immune system because these are viruses that only attack immune cells there. It's going to target those T cells, those assassins, and it's going to shut down your immune response. You don't really die of HIV or AIDS. You die from the fact that there's so many other diseases that you no longer have the protection that you should have. So those are just dangerous because they'll break down your immune system. Now, there are ways that we can fight back against infectious diseases beyond what our immune system can do. Vaccines, of course, one of the single greatest advances of all of human history. This is where we take a weakened or killed pathogen, or part of one, and that is going to fake out your immune system, but it's going to produce real memory B and T cells. So they're going to remember, quote unquote, an infection that they never had. But if that pathogen ever comes by for real, you're going to be able to stop it. Best way to think of this, it's like level one of a video game. It's safe practice for you to train for the real bad guys that come through there. You're not really going to die from the vaccine, but it is going to give your immune system a run for the money, so it's ready for the real thing. Of course, we've got medications. Antibiotics are good for killing bacteria, and antivirals don't necessarily kill a virus, because it's not alive, but they will slow down the virus replication. And of course, public health. 
one of the most important things in human history, even more so than vaccines. Monitoring and regulating our food and water has probably been the single greatest advance in human history. It's this crazy idea. What if we stop pooping in the water that we drink? Who knew? Has saved literally billions of lives. Cannot overstate how important that has been. And of course, promoting vaccination and infection avoiding behavior. Yes, safe sex is very important there. If you want to save a life, go be a doctor. If you want to save thousands of lives, go into public health. They prevent diseases, they promote good behavior, and they protect you from the real threats. Unfortunately, though, we're still getting sick for various reasons. Number one, we are changing the way we are interacting with animals. We are merging together the human and the animal habitats. When you cut down a forest, where do the animals go? They've got to go somewhere, and unfortunately we're sort of crowding them out, and this means that we are in closer proximity to animals than we may have seen before. The exotic animal trade is going to be bringing humans in contact with species that they typically haven't seen before. That can cause problems. Medication misused probably the single greatest setback in my lifetime is the fact that we have started to distrust vaccines and we are letting these preventable illnesses out of their cage and they are wreaking havoc and people are dying because of this. Vaccines are very, very important and they've been studied. We know they don't cause all the problems that people are saying they are and we do know for a fact that they save lives. We're also overusing antibiotics way more than we should be. If you've got a cold, don't take antibiotics. It's not going to do squat against you there. And unfortunately, sometimes doctors give in and just give you antibiotics to let you go away. They shouldn't. You shouldn't be taking them. Because when you take antibiotics when you should not, you're going to have some resistant bacteria and you've just killed off their competition. And so all that's left now is stuff that can't be attacked and can't be treated. So take antibiotics when you need them and don't take them when you don't. And if you do get them, take the full course. Just basically listen to your doctor. Shocking. And finally, there's an arms race between pathogens and the immune system. Both sides are trying to fight and trying to get an advantage over there, and both sides will never give up. The pathogens and the immune system, they keep evolving to attack each other. It's never going to stop. They're never going to give up. So unfortunately, we are always going to deal with the fact that we have these pathogens that are just evolving beyond us. So we are not free of diseases yet, unfortunately, and we never will be, but there are things that we can do.